In 1962, an Adventist pastor and his wife, James and Virginia Cooper, built a boat and sailed up the Mackenzie River, visiting different indigenous communities and sharing Adventist literature, exposing themselves to one of the most inhospitable places on the planet. The Northwest Territories has over a million square kilometers, 11 official languages, in 33 communities. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. I love the summers here because it's pretty well always dry. Lots of fishing, hiking. 24 hours of light. I find the North actually quite a comfortable place to live. The people are extremely warm, and maybe they're warm to compensate for the climate outside, but um, it's a very friendly, warm place to live. We kind of get to make our own entertainment and our own fun, and so it provides a real community kind of feel. For the last 19 years, I've been a school counselor and more recently a school psychologist. The suicide rates are higher both in Northwest Territories and Nunavut than in other parts of Canada. Those issues are related to depression, substance abuse, and past trauma, and even trauma that's continuing to go on in people's lives. Many of the communities in the territories are very isolated. They're flying communities, not accessible by a road system. For most of the year, some of them have winter road systems. So it's very hard for those people to access services. Things are spread out so much. It's so expensive to travel. I've been all in a few places like Cambridge Bay and Tuktayak Tuk, and oh, it's a great need here. When my husband and I first moved to Yellowknife, I remember meeting in this church building with about 14 people each Sabbath. But now the church has grown to where we often have between 60 and 70 people meeting each Sabbath. Just that increase in number of people has really opened the door for a lot more programs that we are able to offer, a lot more outreach to the community. Four for Families is a program that was started by my husband, Blake. The emphasis was to provide activities and supports for families within the church and within the broader community, and offering different classes for ukulele lessons, vegetarian cooking, making photo books. I am a hotelier, and I've had the distinct pleasure of living in many places around the world. One of the challenges that you will find in any remote community is that they, they, they become suspicious of visitors. People got used to other denominations and things coming and going, and just as they get involved, the people are gone, and they're left again in the same situation as before. So when somebody comes in for two months, or, or, or worse, for two weeks, they tend not to have the impact that we are all looking for. A very close friend of mine, that I met back in the mines years ago, I came to talk to him about Christ, and we discussed things for six years. Then he decided he wanted to be baptized. 
a bunch of us went from here to Fort Resolution and baptized them. Beautiful little town. It was right on the Great Slave Lake. It was actually a seven hour drive. And it's a town of maybe 400 people, mostly Aboriginal, but there are people in there from all over. That person has a real burning interest in evangelizing his town. So since then, the church body from here, we went there and followed up, and the people were very gracious to us. It's important that we connect with locals and have locals bring you into the community. Once this local takes you into the community, he or she will be putting their reputation on the line and said, yes, this is a friend that can be trusted. Friends will hang around. Friends don't just come in and disappear. Working with Vacation Bible School in the North, it's a breath of fresh air. You learn so much from the young people. I also get so excited when I see young people having fun in Jesus' name. In this one group, the Denny Nations, I pulled the coordinator aside and I said, um, I couldn't help but notice the excitement in your voice when I said, yes, you could come. And she says, oh, you know, you guys, over the years, you do such a great job with the children. They're excited about coming. They're learning things and you're not being offensive. And we love it. If you take the time to look for negatives, you can find negatives. But I've also learned the true challenge about living in the North is how empowered you become to find solutions. I have the greatest pleasure working with the Pathfinders because I get to see all of the joy. baking bread and one of the Aboriginal children asked me, what does baking bread have to do with Christ? And we had a wonderful half an hour of conversation about the different times that Jesus referred to bread, how that the devil tempted Christ, that he made a stone into bread. But then we got into how we use different ingredients to make the bread and a lot of those ingredients by themselves would not taste good, but when combined together carefully, it makes for a wonderful tasting bread. And the church is the same way. We have different personalities, different cultures, and they come together and, and God bless us and make us a wonderful church. The greatest sermon you can preach is the life you live. The more people we have to live it, the more effective our ministry is going to be. What people need most is commitment. It has to be somebody who is willing to dive in totally, be a part of the local culture. Anything that builds relationships and connects with people lays the foundation for really great mission work. We have seen great support pour out from all over North America, but we still need more help. God is calling you today. Will you pray? Will you give? Will you come?